Hi everyone, my name is Sharda and this is going to be my born again story, how I came to the Lord. I'm going to make this as short as I can, though it's very long, and uh, I'm going to start from the beginning, who I am, where I come from, and so on. So, Sharda, it's a... Uh, Hindu Sanskrit name. It's probably uh, Sanskrit's probably one of the oldest pagan languages that you'll find out there. Basically, the root of Hinduism. Most of them spoke Sanskrit, and uh, it means goddess of music and intelligence. And um, you know. I was born in Trinidad and Tobago. That's in the Caribbean. It's a it's an island off the coast of South America, off the coast of Venezuela, a little bit near Grenada. And uh, my mom is originally from South America, Guyana. And she met my dad while she was in college in Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, she was Pentecostal, Christian, though she did not um, follow Christianity the way that we do today. Most of you that are looking, that are watching this video, um, she did not practice Basically, she didn't practice what the Bible, you know, calls us to do or what God wants us to do. She did not. She was not doing that at the time. My mom had a very hard time with my dad. When she met him is when things started to uh, get increasingly hard for her in her life. I mean, she dropped out of college and... Then she went on to have about nine abortions. I was the tenth child, the only one that made it out, I suppose. And um, it was really tragic, but I know the Lord's forgiven her for that because she's repented and she's now with the Lord. She's living. <laughs> she hasn't died or anything, but she's been through her own experiences, her personal uh, walk with the Lord. And he dealt her a, a sad fate at first, but then she turned back to him. And through all the trials that she's experienced, she has found the Lord again. And I praise God for that. But, you know, they wanted to you know, get rid of me, abort me, whatever it was. And my my dad, I, I suppose, had instigated all these um, events. And uh, I don't know what happened. I think they tried to, and it didn't work. So, thank the Lord, now I'm here to share this message. So I was born into Roman Catholicism because my dad was Roman Catholic and he still is today and most of my family members are on his side. And I was baptized into the Roman Catholic faith and when my mom and dad split up at around age four, I, uh, I went back to my mom's country with her, became Pentecostal and lived in that the Pentecostal lifestyle where there is uh, lots of singing and dancing and you know praising God but going home and doing what the Lord does not like um, you know people did not really people were only spiritually inclined on Sundays and then the rest of the days well they lived the way they wanted to, and they did whatever they wanted to. But on Sundays, on Sundays, everyone does what God wants, and hears God. 
And um, as I grew up, I went through a lot of a lot of things. You know, I've always had a peace about everything. I even the hardships. There were times when we didn't have a home to live in, and it was a short period of time. It wasn't like a long time. What happened? My mom wasn't very good with money, and the financial part got us into a lot of uh, trouble because there were times when she couldn't, uh, as a single parent, she couldn't manage the finances very well, and we'd find ourselves in uh, in situations where we had nothing to eat, and sometimes I'd have to go to school without nothing, and you know, pretend that uh, that I was okay, and I somehow got through these situations and with a smile on my face, and I was always a very happy child, despite all our circumstances, which was strange to me at that time. I didn't know the Lord yet, but I would come to know why I had this strength in the face of all our adversities, all our circum bad circumstances. And um, I don't know, I lived, I lived my, my life, uh, everything was pretty strange for me. I, I, everywhere I went, I felt like I didn't quite fit in. And I'm not sure how other people viewed me. Maybe I did not fit in. Maybe I did. I don't know how I appeared to them. But I felt like I never really fit in. And I was all, I always had all these questions in my mind growing up. Um, I went through, uh, you know, a little bit of sexual abuse. Um, from a family member and I've already resolved this issue with them when I came to the Lord and I just forgave everyone and I still talk to that person and from my heart I've forgiven because the Lord has forgiven me so I went into high school and uh, I started having questions. I was knowledgeable enough to know scripture through studying with Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, they would come knock on the door and because my mom was Pentecostal, she was she was a very welcoming, loving woman, though she had her her um you know her down times, her quirks. So she never really shoved them away or pushed them away. So uh, she was very understanding of, um, you know, she all thought that just because we're from different religious backgrounds, we shouldn't be, you know, separate. She believed that as long as you believe in God, you can get along. So she welcomed the Jehovah Witnesses into our home and they would teach me that little yellow book, What Does the Bible Really Teach? So I completed my studies with the Witnesses and I went back to my Pentecostal church and they were, you know, I was so, I was so good at at explaining points through my uh, Jehovah Witness studies. They, they had no idea I was studying with these people, but I went back there and I would have answers to questions that they had in church. So they said, you know, let's make you the Sunday school teacher. So <laughs> by the age of around, what, 11, 12, I was teaching younger children and children my age. They put me in charge of those children and I was teaching them the word. And then I grew a little older. My mom allowed me to date. I didn't really have a lot of people to date, but there was one person that came into my life and I started dating and then everything went haywire from there. The purpose of dating that person was to help them in life, 
they were going through a hard time with their parents and their family and um, through helping that person I went straight into a relationship with the person which was my ex and uh, you know at that time I went to another institution that was uh, you know, they dealt with more clairvoyance. They were like a university of peace studies. So I enrolled myself into, they wanted to do trials and they didn't care what age you were. They just wanted you to test the course out. So it was, um, it was a course for a certificate in peace studies where you learn about nonviolent communication and and uh, how to love people and under and heart to heart communication, listening, and not talking too much, and um, that made me a lot better at communicating with people that were hurt or went through sexual abuse and violence, and because I became now more of a listening ear than a judging one, and um, I found out that the founder of this university was actually clairvoyant and you know new age so at a young age I did a lot I went into a lot of things because I, I was a very curious person and I loved learning I loved learning so much and um, where I'm from life is all about being successful and getting a good grade getting ahead in life. Nothing else really matters. Everyone just waits for that person to make it in life. That's all they want. They all just that. They want success. And I don't think anyone really cares how you get success. They just require you to be successful. And if you're not successful or you don't do it the way that they want you to do it, then you're pretty much a shame to your family and uh, as I went on around the age of uh, 17 I started having problems with my mom because she became more and more demanding um, in the way that in a way that she wanted she was pushing me to uh, more and more to success and she thought that the little things uh, like uh, she thought she wasn't comfortable with me dating anymore so she would like torment me um, you know verbally day and night day and night and I don't blame her for this I felt like the Lord was in charge the whole time because he was pushing me to the area that he wanted me to be in everything is his plan his everything works towards God's will you know and all of these things led me to where I am today so it got so bad that I couldn't function mentally I felt like I need to get away from this this is torment she won't stop day and night every good grades weren't good enough anymore and I was like, you know what, I can't take this anymore, so I moved out. At the age of 18, I moved out from my mom's house and went to live in my, with my dad because I figured, you know what, he's not going to be like this toward me. I'm going to get to do whatever I want. I'm going to, uh, you know, respect him, respect his authority, but I need to learn more about my dad because I've been living with my mom the whole time. So I went to live with him, and at that time I enrolled in, I got accepted into college because I had about 12 A's, and that is extremely good where I'm from. So they accepted me into college to pursue earth sciences. Um, I wanted to pursue earth sciences because that was my passion, but they let me 
into biochemistry, which really was not my field. Though I did all the sciences that, that you can possibly think about, they didn't think that doing an earth science would give me, um, would make me successful in life because I'm in the Caribbean and that's not what people usually major in. So they put me into biochemistry. And so at this point, this point was my turning point. I I don't know how to uh, get dive into this. Basically what happened was everything was going just the way I wanted it to. And then I started to question what I believed. I started to uh, really dive deeper into religion. I figured that I don't like organized religion. I remembered all the hardships I went through as a child. I remembered all the abuse and the way that people behave. What affected me the most was the way that people behaved. And they behaved certain ways and then they called themselves a Christian. And somehow it just didn't, uh, I didn't like it. I wasn't comfortable with it. And I decided that, you know what, if they're calling themselves Pentecostal and they're behaving like this, then Christianity really isn't what I, I don't want to be involved with this. And I started to really hate it. I started to think about all the things that happened in Christianity and, you know, I was a really, uh, really into reading and studying and anything I put my head to, I studied it really uh, a lot. You know, I'd stay up late at night just reading my textbooks from cover to cover. I was really passionate about what I was interested in and I figured... I don't believe, I believe in a God source, but I don't believe that this way that these people uh, are saying is the right way to this God source. Maybe I should just let all of this preconceived, all the preconceived notions, everything that, you know, I was taught, maybe I should just unlearn this and start over. And uh, I rejected Christianity the way that, you know, it should be, and I turned agnostic. You believe in a God source, but you don't believe specifically in a religion. It's, pr it's probably the closest thing to the New Age, which I then uh, dive deep into after that. So I set a goal for myself all the time. I was doing well, you know, and I figured this is my new goal. My new goal is to study each religion that's out there and find the right one for me. My study started out with Hinduism, something that was very close to me because the person I dated came from that faith. My name came from that faith, and I figured, you know, let me see if this is right for me. So I went into the Hinduism, studied. It really didn't make sense to me, so I was like, this is not for me. Then I went on to the Islam, Islamic. I, I went to the library, set out an entire day when I had all my studies out of the way to read the Quran cover to cover. That didn't work out for me either. In fact, when I was reading this, I fell into such a deep sleep. I can't even explain it. It was like a light switch that turned on, and then I was out, and I woke up the end of the day with the Quran in front of me, and I haven't, I, I haven't studied anything. So I was like, you know, I don't think this is for me. I don't think this is for me. So I, I put that away. Then I went into, uh, you know, all the religions you could think about, Buddhism, 
uh, New Age religion. I was really fond of the New Age religion, so I started meditating and I, uh, I wanted to astral project. I was very interested in that. I believed in it and I was getting to that point. I was at the point of lucid dreaming, which is like a, a step lower than astral, the astral realm, plane, whatever you call it. You know, I was listening to binaural beats to get me in the mood, get my vibration right, and so on. I I fell into sexual sin, uh, not with, uh, you know, not like other people would. Like, I never had multiple partners or anything like that. I was just really, I was too busy to think about relationships in that way. I had still had the first relationship that I've ever been in and you know I was uh, into all these things and I you know started to meditate to meet my spirit guides which I did meet and then I started talking to this familiar spirit and oh my goodness it was a mess um, Finally, the final religion that I had to go into, I, I figured, you know, the New Age is, is, is right for me. Because the more I meditated and the more I, I felt like this energy that was coming inside of me. And I started to feel like extraordinary, you know, like, uh, like I had some secret knowledge that other people didn't have. And it made me feel special, and it made me feel powerful and different. And um, and in my lucid dreaming, you know, I don't want to get too much into that stuff. But basically, I I could, you know, I, I, I came to a point where I was so good at doing what I did that I could I would just meet someone and I tell them when they were born like I'd know okay you're cancer you're definitely Taurus you're definitely uh you know Scorpio I would just know it was like it was like a, a kind of clairvoyant thing like I was able to read people's personalities so to speak and um really demonic and uh i even re renamed myself um after some crazy goddess of the jungle or something <laughs> i can't even uh, let's go on the last religion that was left for me to explore was Satanism and I thought to myself let me get this over with because you know uh, I need to know about this this is a religion they say it's not a religion that it's just a philosophy it is a religion because in in Satanism Luciferianism you believe in in something you believe in lots of things you know it, it probably takes more faith to believe in Satanism and Luciferianism than it does, than most Christians have towards their own God. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't just, these religions weren't just like on a Sunday you do something. They, they, it was a commitment. You, you, had to, you had to work on it. You had to meditate a lot. To reach a certain level. It was like a mockery of what we would do for the Lord. And you're doing it in a different way. To satisfy different lusts and different... You basically don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you, you don't know what, what is happening in the spirit realm. Anyway. And uh, so I got into my satanic Luciferian research and studying and I found myself drifting more and more into it like I started to romanticize 
the the fact that I was delving deeper into into hidden knowledge, secret knowledge, and it became attractive to me. And it really lured me in, in that I thirst, I wanted more and more. It's like it, it satisfied my flesh, like my personal desires for success and wisdom. And I went deeper and deeper. And as I went deeper and deeper, I started to get the idea that maybe the God that I'm thinking about is the bad God. Maybe the other one is the good God. And who says that we need to think a certain way? And it's just like as I read more and more, I began to favor the Luciferian being instead of the God that I had come to know during my childhood. And it just happens. It, it, it You become ensnared in this kind of secret knowledge. And I understand how people that serve Lucifer, Satan, wh whatever his name is now, I understand why they do it because I've been into this kind of knowledge and I know the seduction that's involved in it. It really changes you from the inside out. It it consumes your mind and after a while you can't see things the way it used to be. You know, you become blinded by this. And uh, I figure this is what I now believe. Like, you know, I've met my spirit guide. I've been meditating. I've been doing everything. And I feel this energy and this power inside of me. And I've never felt this before. And I feel liberated in my spirit. Well, not in my spirit, in my soul or what. It, it's 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 all an illusion it's all seduction seducing spirits you let them in and they just take over and they make a fool out of you and uh i this is when everything started to get um this is when everything changed in my life I went into martial arts. I loved martial arts. It fed it fed the anger inside of me. I could just go and fight whatever I was feeling, get it out of my system and and with martial arts you meditate even more because you want strength and you want power. And someone that was as skinny as I was and as petite as I was was <laughs> not anymore but as as small built as I was I needed power and I needed strength and this was the only way to get it I would meditate and I would I would fight every every day after after my classes and I felt good and I started to walk around feeling this anxiety like I it was so much anxiety inside of me. I'd, I'd always be listening to, you know, some some kind of rap. You know, these underground rappers. I was really into that. Even my taste in music started to change. I, I don't know who I was becoming. I just don't know. I, I was, like, thirsty for, like... Uh, any kind of music that gets your adrenaline going and I just be walking down the road with all this anxiety like I wish someone would just just offend me just punch me so I could get to unleash on them you know this 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 anger that I have inside and uh, I was enjoying it all because it's all of the flesh and I hadn't been born again and to me, it, it felt powerful. It felt really powerful. 
And all I could think about is every time I saw a Christian or came across a Christian, all I would feel for them is pity. And like, I would, I would, I would, I would really like, I felt pity for them. I was like, look at these, look at these, uh, you know, schleps. Look at, look at these people that just, they don't even know what they, they don't know about living. Like, I'm living. I feel, I feel this energy and the strength and power and this knowledge that I have. And they don't even know what's going on. They don't even know what's spiritual. They don't even, uh, you know, they're poor. They don't have success. I don't, I never want to be like that. And that's how I was thinking. <laughs> And everything started to hit a brick wall for me after that. I would go to class and as smart as I was, I wasn't smart anymore. Something happened to me. And I think this is when the Lord was trying to call me to him. You know, I mentioned in another video how I met a Christian. We were debating abortion and I was... Um, pro-abortion and what he told me and so on and all these things started to happen to me and I just didn't understand why and I fell into a depression because I was going to classes I was doing everything that I did before and I should be learning but I wasn't it was like it was like a brick wall was in front of my life I couldn't move anywhere. I wasn't growing in anything. I started to fail my classes. I was failing everything. I, I became shameful to, to my parents. I was ashamed to, you know, talk to my mom or my dad about it because that's not how they knew me. I, I always had everything together, you know, in terms of studies. And... I couldn't explain myself, like what was happening to me, I, I don't know. I was failing, and then when I'd go to the teacher, all of a sudden, I never had these problems before with, you know, um, people being attracted to me or whatever. But then I'd go to the, the, the sirs, the teachers, the male teachers, and then all of a sudden, like, they would try to get into like a relationship with me for grades, you know. And I know this is unheard of in certain countries, but where I'm from, people get away with it because they put fear into um, whoever they're trying to manipulate, you know. And uh, I started to realize that if I wanted to get ahead from here, I need to do things that I've never done in my life and bad things um, and I just couldn't find I couldn't find it in me to do that I mean there was some good left some morality con the way my mom raised me even though she wasn't a practicing Christian like she didn't follow what the word said completely I still had that that moral compass in me and I knew what was right and what wasn't when it came to this kind of stuff. And I started to get depressed and they didn't know what was wrong with me and my dad would take me to the counselors, the teachers were worried, they were like, what's going on? You know, are you on drugs? It was so bad, like they asked me. You know, how does this person go from this to this? Are you are you on drugs, <laughs> you know? And I would I I it just got worse and worse and worse. And then I slipped into getting suicidal. I was I was very suicidal. Sometimes I'd be cutting vegetables and I think, you know, maybe I should just slit my wrists and you know I, I was very depressed and very suicidal at that time and uh, I started to research ways to kill myself 
and I started to look for ways to do it because I didn't want to feel pain but I wanted to die at, at that point you know what I I just I needed like the perfect way to do it you know the Lord is so good he if I had if I had listened to those doctrines of demons, I would have been in a place where there is no forgiveness, you know, and I'm just so happy that the Lord stepped in, God stepped in, and, um, you know, at this point, even my life started to feel terrible. I... I was still going to college. I was on the verge of dropping out. And I'd go there and I just wouldn't understand anything. And I'd be like, why am I here? Like, what am I doing with myself? I I was so frustrated. I can't even begin to explain the amount of inter the internal war that was happening in my mind, in my heart, everything. It, all at once, like... All at once, everything just turned against me, even friends, and and I just distanced, I isolated myself, and so on. So um, even in my lucid dreaming, the 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 uh, characters that I normally meet in in my lucid dreams would turn on me. So I felt like something's going on. Eventually I reached a point where I couldn't take it anymore and I just, uh, I, I really couldn't take it. And deep in my heart, I felt like life had no meaning for me and I had no purpose. I don't know what it is. I can't find it. Um... I can't find purpose in life and uh, I decided, you know what, I am through with this. I just, um, I don't want it anymore. And then I felt, I went to my mom's country I went to my mom's country and that's the first time I got deliverance I started to uh, I had so much hate and anger inside of me that even she seeing my mom irritated me and I went there for a holiday when I had a summer break from college and I brought all my Luciferian books with me and I would like leave them on her table just to mock her belief and she would get up she would get up in the middle of the like she would get up in the morning or whatever and she'd see all my Luciferian books on the counter and she would freak out. And I felt good that she knew that I, I didn't believe in what she believed in, that I wasn't like her. And um, she would say, get these things out of my house, get these things out of my house. And I'd be like, why? This is what I believe. You should read it. You know, I, I started to... I don't know, like, you become an evangelist for this kind of thing. Eventually, you find yourself trying to convince people that you have the truth. And, uh... I believed I did. And... She said, you know what, I can't take this. It's like... It's like I let a demon into my house. Well, who are you? Like, She started to talk to me like I was some entity. And she started to say things like, Who are you? 
what are you doing here, you know? And I guess because I guess because she grew up Pentecostal, they believed in spiritual things and she knew that what was happening to me was demonic. And um she took me to a small church where her workplace was. And these people, they gathered in a circle. They weren't like the ones, the normal people. They were, um, they were different. They're like what we are right now. And um, they held hands. They were like standing in a circle and they were holding hands. And I was in my mind, I was saying, great, look at this foolishness. Now we're going to like hug each other and sing Kumbaya. This is just real. This is rich. This is really good. I wish I was somewhere else right now. And reluctantly, they took my hands because they knew what was going on. But I didn't know that they had a plan to like pray for my deliverance. So um, I submitted myself to that moment anyway. I was like, okay, the sooner this ends, the better. Let's just sing the stupid songs and let's just hold each other's stupid hands and let's just uh, get this over with real quick. And they started to pray and they prayed for me. And as soon as the pastor left, I felt like I was gonna faint, like my 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 knees uh, started to fail me. I was like, I need a seat. I just told them, I, I was like, they were still standing there talking. You know how Christians like to socialize after they have like a study or they sing together or whatever. And uh, I said, I just wanted everyone out of my way. I just felt this. I just felt this drop in me and my knees got weak and I, I felt like I was going to pass out and I was like, I need a chair, I need a chair right now. And this incredible force, just, I felt them, like five of them just zoop, zoop, zoop. It was coming from here. And then I lay back in the chair and I was screaming and crying and screaming and I could feel them in the spirit just lifting off of me and when they were out like I didn't know what to do with myself I felt like I was seeing the world for the first time I can't explain it it was like everything it was like those demons that were blocking me I was seeing through their eyes it's like I haven't seen the world in a while is how I felt and um that's the first stage of me being born again. I didn't quite submit myself to the Lord yet. I went home and um, I went back to my country with my dad. And I broke down in tears because I felt convicted. Now I could feel the conviction after I got that first set of deliverance. And I, I said, I'm lo I, I cried out to him with, with every fiber of my being. Like I just, I, I fell to my knees in my room. No one was home. I shut the door and I just cried and cried and cried out to him with everything that I had in me. And I hungered for an answer. And I said, Lord, if you are the truth, God, if, if you're there and you hear me, answer me, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm fed up, I can't take it anymore, I don't want to live here anymore, I can't, I, I can't, I don't know what's going on, it's so confusing, I'm confused, I'm mixed up, I'm confused and I need an answer right now. If you are who you say you are, speak to me and I hungered for that answer and it happened right there I felt tremendous love and 
it was like it was like oh I can't explain it but suddenly the lights in my room I had my lights on and they just got like a million times brighter and I remember looking to one corner of the room and that one light it was like it was like it got so bright that the entire bulb I couldn't see it anymore it was just brightness and when you meet the Lord I didn't see his face or his his shape or anything like that I just saw this bright light and it's not like when you you know how people when they see an angel they have to test the spirit because they don't know what it is it's not that way with the Lord like when you see the Lord or you sense him or he's present in a room you know exactly what it is you know it's the Lord you know it is the Lord you know the the authority is you sense the authority and you sense the the righteousness in it and you know exactly who he is and at that moment I was like it was like my head was stuck in that position I was stuck looking at it I couldn't move all I could do was cry and cry and cry and cry and then I started to say oh my god because at that moment it seemed like just two seconds but in my mind it was like a it was like a not even like a vision it's like it's like he was speaking to my my soul my uh, my spirit I don't know how to explain it but it was like in two seconds I saw my entire life flip like this and I saw every every moment that I lived and he was there and he said to me in my in my soul he, he said to my soul not in an audible voice but in a you know communication that you don't really you're not really talking you know I was asking so much questions in my mind and I, I felt so much conviction and I felt so I, I just kept saying sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I, I'm sorry please forgive me I am sorry please and I just kept going on like that because I knew that he was always there for me and I never acknowledged him and he, he spoke to my spirit and he was like all these times and it was just flipping past me and he was saying to me remember this remember this remember this all these times I was the one I was there with you all these times don't you know this that I was there oh, and I just I just felt like I was such a wretched ungrateful person and it was incredible you know I, I've never felt like that in my entire life and at that moment I believe that I became born again because everything changed after that and nothing was the same again I had a hunger for the word I started reading it like it was the best novel that I've ever encountered ever picked up I read it from cover to cover I couldn't stop I couldn't stop praising God I was walking up and down my house worshiping the Lord it was tremendous it was it was life-changing I can't explain it and he just was he was answering questions in my mind like you know I was asking all these why's why this why that why 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 and it's like he answered me but I can't recall it's I cannot possibly explain things without this video being three hours long 
you can the things that the Lord tells you in like what seems like two minutes to explain it takes about two hours you know and um, I never had any of those questions again he just continued to speak to me and there comes a season after you become born again where you feel like it's like you know the Bible talks about first love you've forgotten your first love that first encounter of his love is so it's so magnificent and awesome that you're always hoping you feel that all the time and you don't feel it all the time you feel it when you come to him and he talks to you changes you speaks to you renews your entire being you feel it you praise him you worship him I was I was constantly in tears you know I was I saw my sin for what it is even though I didn't do all the things that normal you know people people do bad things and I haven't done uh, terrible things in my human perspective but the way he saw it he was very disappointed very hurt every sin he hates every sin big or small every new transgression sharpens his sword against you and uh, it's it's incredible and there comes a time in your walk when you feel like he's not there and you should know that he is always there when you do the right thing not the right thing what you think is the right thing he wants you to constantly be in communication with him for me that started as praise and worship and I would praise him I would read the Bible it, I was so hungry for it and I look for these signs when I see when I meet other Christians and I hear their testimonies I know I know who really had an encounter with Christ and who didn't certain things line up and I can tell it's like you it's like knowing <laughs> I think I'm gonna cry <laughs> it's like you know who is your brother and sister and you know who isn't you sense the spirit inside of that person some people are not that sensitive to it but I am and I know I don't tell them but I, I know you know and uh, God is so good that's my that was my born again experience after I became born again I got even more deliverance deliverance is the children's bread you can't believe in a spiritual God that his son him and his son are spirit and you believe in you know heaven hell angels all spiritual things but you don't believe in that deliverance is for today and healing is for today it's like Derek Prince said that person's a trunkless elephant <laughs> it's not normal and, uh, I just I'm so grateful you know and I feel this way every time I see another person come to Christ I feel joy in my in my spirit that now that person is on to salvation and if they continue on to the end they will be saved and they will be transformed and given a glorified body just as Christ is and I'm happy for them
And for the persons that don't know Christ yet, I'm still trying to figure out how to reach them. But um, he gives us the experiences that we had so that we can relate to people that had these same experiences. And because of the vast amount of experience I've had with different things and different religions, I know how to have a heart-to-heart -heart communication with someone who's been into that. And my husband, he's he's got a different walk in in with the Lord, and you know I can't relate to people who's been in a, into violence and and drugs and all that, and he can, and he can have a heart to heart with them because I I don't know about it, and so everyone everyone has a purpose in Christ. I, I realize without Christ there is only an expectation of fiery darts and indignation. It, you're condemned already. You feel that condemnation on you. You don't know what it is. When you come to Christ, He it's like he takes a heavy yoke off of you, that burden that you've been carrying around your entire life. And as long as you abide in him, you will not fear. And uh, I just give God all the glory and the praise. And I continue to worship him when I can't... I try to as much as I can and now I have a family so I serve him in different ways through my family and I worship him in different ways by my by listening to him and by practicing obedience and patience and selflessness and that's how you grow from that time on of course I don't I don't feel that first love all the time, but there are times when he's very pleased and he lets a little bit of that love out and I know that he's there and I know, okay, he's still here with me. I just need to continue what I'm doing in this life. And uh, that is it, you guys. I know this video is long, but if you have any questions or anything I should go in depth with, let me know. Okay, be blessed everybody and have a good day.